And as we saw in last week's video, build systems are an easy way to tell Sublime to run an external program in response to a key press to help you do things like build your software and run it and things of that nature. Sometimes when you're doing something like that, you occasionally need the command line you're executing to be just slightly different or executed in just slightly a different way. One way to handle that would be to create multiple build systems for each scenario, but you're duplicating a lot of work. And there's a better way to do that, and that way is Sublime Text Build System Variants. <laughs> Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here. Welcome to this video on Sublime Text Build System Variants. Before we get started, as a reminder, if you find these videos helpful or useful at all, please thumb or subscribe as you find appropriate. And if you have any comments or questions on the content of this video, other videos that I've made, or suggestions for other videos you'd like me to do, drop those down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at Odat Nerd. Now we were talking about Sublime Text build system variants. Now here we have that example C program from last time with some changes in it. We've added some debugging logic to be able to trace where the code is in its execution and it can be turned on or off by way of defining a symbol named debug. Now as contrived examples go, <laughs> this one is top notch. Now let's say you don't always want to run your code with debug but Sometimes you do. One way you could do that is to just create a second build system with a slightly different command line, but you're sort of duplicating effort there because except for the command that you're executing, everything about that build system would be identical. So one way we can do this a lot easier is by using a sublime text build system variant. So to that end, if we switch over to the actual build system from last week, I have pre-prepared this sequence of text that I'm gonna spit in here. And this adds a new key called variants. And in the variance key is a list of objects because your build system may contain more than one variant. This one only contains one. Now, the only required key in a variant is the name for reasons we'll see in just a second. So the name of this build variant is debug. And we also have a shell command in here that is virtually identical to the one on line two, except it has this extra minus D debug argument in it telling it to define the debug symbol and turn debugging on. But what's not duplicated here is the file regex, because whether or not debugging is turned on, error messages still come out the same. And the working directory isn't specified in there because the working directory doesn't matter as far as debugging is concerned either. And it's certainly still a source file of type C when you're debugging, so there's no need to define that either. So, in use, what this is actually telling Sublime is that this build file contains two builds, and the second one has a name of debug and is identical to the first one except for the shell command as outlined right here. So I'm going to go ahead and save that build system and switch back to my main file. Now, when I choose to build, I get prompted because now there's more build systems than there were before. So Sublime needs to verify that which one I want to use. And this is the one that we built last time. This is the tiny CC build itself. But there's also this other one named debug, which the astute among us will note is the name of the variant. So that's why the one above has C single file run. This is actually a variant of the C single file build that ships with Sublime that runs the program instead of just compiling it. So as last time, if I choose this one, then the program is executed and it just says, hello world. And then I determine that there's some awful bug in my code and I can't quite figure out what it is. So I choose build with, we saw that in the menu in the previous video. And this time I tell it I want to debug. And it automatically selects that variant, changes the command line arguments, and now we can see it tracing that it is entering and exiting main. And as before, the, it, Sublime remembers which variant I chose or which build I chose, so I can make some code changes, press the 
key and build and have the same output. And in fact, if I was to accidentally break this when I build, I still get that same error message that I got before. And that's because the variant inherited all of that other information. And then I can build it again. And now I'm pretty sure my code works. So I use build with one more time, choose the original build, and I'm back to where I was originally. And that, in a very small nutshell, because it's a very easy topic to discuss, is the concept of a build system variant. It's just a very simple way for you to be able to specify slight tweaks to an existing build system for the occasional scenario. You'll find this in some of the build systems that ship with Sublime. For example, the aforementioned C single file build that ships with Sublime has the ability to run the program as well as compiling it. And the Python build system has the ability to compile without running as a syntax check, just so you can verify if your code is working. And that's all we have for this particular video on build systems. More videos to come. So I'd like to thank you for watching. Remember to thumb and subscribe as appropriate if you found this video helpful in any way and you'd like to see more. If you have any questions about what we talked about here or uh, questions about any of my other videos or suggestions for future videos, drop those down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at OdatNerd. But until that time, uh, this is OdatNerd asking you to have a sublime day.